Quentin Dunahue bought his house a couple of months ago and had never once regretted his decision. The man liked everything about it, from the layout of the rooms to the interior design and furniture. It was a truly great house, which made anyone who came to visit feel very comfortable. Things in the house were always in their place, as if someone invisible kept everything around the house in order. Before he found this place, Quentin looked at about a dozen other houses, but none of them looked as clean and well-organized as this one. The most interesting thing was that the cellar of the house didn't seem all that neat or put together to Quentin. He was a man of about 45 with a small beer belly, shifty eyes, and hands shaking with excitement. He seems strange somehow, Quentin thought, having doubts about the cellar. But when the man went inside the house, it didn't seem to matter anymore. I need to sell the house as soon as possible, the seller said, twirling a battered baseball cap in his hands, trying to rush Quentin into making a decision. Of course, the seller's persistence made the man feel uneasy, but he didn't feel like putting off the purchase because he was worried that someone else might get the house. Therefore, Quentin decided to buy the house that he liked so much at first sight. Closing the deal in record time, Quentin finally had his own house. His wife, Melanie, was on cloud nine. Before buying the house, they lived in a neighboring city where they rented housing in a bad neighborhood. It was so dangerous that they could never relax, always fearing that they would get robbed. But their new home was located in a peaceful and quiet area. It was especially important to them because Melanie was pregnant and was due to have twins in two months. Can you imagine that we're going to have two babies soon? Melanie said happily. I'm going to be a double dad. Quentin joked, hugging his wife. Winter that year was especially harsh. That kind of cold was rare, even in Wyoming. Having woken up earlier than usual, Quentin went to the kitchen to make coffee. Shivering from the cold, the man looked out the window and whistled in surprise. The difference between the temperature outside and inside caused the windows to get covered with a thin layer of ice. There was only a little clear circle that allowed the man to see the outside world. It was through this small clearing that Quentin saw an old woman sitting on a bench in front of the house. Wrapped in a patched overcoat, the woman was trembling in the wind and looked like a bird that had fallen out of its warm nest. Oh, what's going on here? What is she doing out there in such a cold? She's going to get herself sick, Quentin thought anxiously. The man was about to go outside when Melanie came into the kitchen. Catching her husband's surprised look, the woman said, Is that old woman sitting on the bench outside again? I saw her there yesterday and the day before. She usually comes by at lunchtime when you're at work, but today she showed up early. What is she doing there? There must be a reason why she's come over, Quinton said. I don't know, she usually just sits there, looks at people walking by, and then gets up in the late afternoon and wanders off somewhere. She's been doing that for about three days now, Melanie explained. Quinton shook his head sympathetically. I tried to invite her to come inside, but she refused. The woman added, stroking her rounded belly. Quentin raised an eyebrow in surprise and marveled at the endurance of this fragile old woman. The fact was that he'd always been very kind to homeless people since he grew up in an orphanage. Being deprived of parental care and affection, Quentin valued family more than anything else in the world. It was truly the meaning of his life. Quentin didn't know who exactly his parents were. According to the caregivers, he was brought by in a baby carrier and left at the entrance. There was a change of clothes at the bottom of the carrier, as well as a couple of diapers, a bottle of milk, and a small cross. The most interesting thing was that the cross was made of gold, but it was hung on a regular string. Quentin still wore that cross in memory of his past and considered it a parting gift from his mother. The man never condemned his mother for bringing her newborn son to the orphanage. And now, seeing the lonely old woman sitting on the bench outside, Quentin immediately decided to find out what was going on with her. He put on his fur parka and went outside, taking a deep breath of fresh, frosty air. The old woman sat without moving and looked like she had turned into a statue. But as Quentin came closer, the stranger lifted her head and looked at him with eyes red from the wind. Good morning, ma'am. Is there anything I can help you with? Quentin addressed her. The stranger was silent for a while, but then she gathered her courage and said quietly, No, but thank you. 
If you don't mind, I'll just sit here for a little longer, and then I'll leave. The old woman's answer had Quentin worried. Realizing that something was definitely off with their situation, the man decided to find out as much as possible about the old woman. Aren't you cold? Sitting outside in this weather for so long? Quentin asked cautiously. No, I'm used to it already. I used to spend a lot of time outside. The elderly woman answered with a sniff. Uh, my name is Quentin Dunahue. I live in the house across the street. Would you like to come in for a cup of tea? There's also some pie left over from yesterday. My wife knows her way around the kitchen, so it's actually very good. Quentin voiced his proposal. At the mention of hot tea, a spark of hope lit up in the old woman's eyes. I'm Charlotte Douglas. I have to pass on the pie, but I'd love a cup of tea. Thank you for offering. The woman answered. Holding the old woman's hand on the icy road, Quentin led her inside the house. There, the old woman was greeted by Melanie, who understood everything without words and had already managed to cook a simple breakfast. Mrs. Douglas ate the food and thanked the hosts for their hospitality. You have a great house, it's very cozy, the old woman said with tears in her eyes. We do our best to keep it nice and neat, although I can't keep it as clean as the previous owner. The house literally sparkled when we moved in, Melanie said with a smile. The old woman's face suddenly turned pale and her breathing became frequent and hoarse. Are you feeling sick? Sh should we call an ambulance? Quentin asked anxiously, but Mrs. Douglas had already come to her senses and refused any help. No, 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 no need for an ambulance. I'm fine. It's just my memories, the old woman whispered. For some reason, Quentin felt bad for the elderly guest at that moment. He felt that the poor old woman was either very lonely or very unhappy, or both. Where do you live? Quentin asked cautiously. His question made Charlotte tense up visibly, after which she lowered her eyes and answered. I'm staying with a friend, not far from here. I just come over to sit on the bench. Quentin's face showed genuine astonishment. The man couldn't understand Charlotte's motives for coming all the way to his house just to sit on a bench in the freezing cold. When the man was about to ask his next question, Mrs. Douglas continued, This used to be my house, actually, but then my son sold it, so apparently I'm homeless now. How is that even possible? How, how could your son leave you out in the cold like that? Quentin exclaimed. The man simply couldn't comprehend how someone could treat their own mother so cruelly. Nevertheless, he now understood why the seller was in such a hurry to sell the house, pretty much begging him to close the deal as soon as possible. So that's why the house was so clean. It was this woman who kept it in perfect order and not her scoundrel of a son, Quentin thought, amazed by his own conclusion. Without even realizing how it happened, Charlotte Douglas started talking about her past. As it turned out, Charlotte and Benjamin Douglas bought this house about a half a century ago. Back then, the house looked like it belonged in the story of three little pigs and could fall apart at the first blow of the wind. But when Charlotte and Benjamin renovated it and had the roof changed, things got much better. A year later, their daughter Linda was born. It seemed that the family of Charlotte and Benjamin could finally be happy, and all they had to do to make it last forever was love each other and be faithful to each other until the end of their days. Unfortunately, reality was a bit different. Linda was always a headstrong child. I don't know who she got it from. She skipped school and didn't like studying at all. She dreamed of becoming a model. Charlotte added with a sad sigh. So what happened then? Quentin asked, looking genuinely interested. The expression in the old woman's eyes made it clear that it was very hard for her to share her story. After graduation, Linda met some biker and followed him to another city. At first, she sent Christmas cards and asked for money, but then she cut all ties with us, and I've never heard from her again. And a little while later, my husband died in an accident on the river. I lost my entire family. Benjamin's boat capsized, and his body was carried away by the current. Charlotte continued, brushing away a tear. Quentin and Melanie listened to the old woman's story and were truly shocked. Her story seemed so unusual that the couple couldn't help but feel sorry for the old woman and everything that she had to go through. I lived on my own for a while, and then I met a man named Bruce. He had a son, 
Richie. For some reason, my stepson disliked me at first sight, and that was despite the fact that I helped Richie with his schoolwork, took care of him after the death of his own father, and tried to help him in any way I could. And the way he chose to thank me was by selling my house and throwing me out on the street. But it's probably all because of his gambling problem. Richie loves playing cards, and it seems to be the only thing that matters to him. Charlotte Douglas summed up. By the time the old woman finished her story, tears were streaming down Melanie's face. The woman simply couldn't understand how Mrs. Douglas's son could have treated her so cruelly. How could someone throw another person out on the street in such a cold and all for their financial gain? Melanie thought, shivering. Exchanging glances with her husband, the woman realized that he was thinking the same. Mrs. Douglas, ma'am, this is your house, so we thought, how would you feel about staying here with us? Melanie suggested, stammering at every word. Charlotte Douglas's eyes lit up with a glimmer of hope, which quickly went out. No, you have your own family, and you're going to have a baby soon. I don't want to cause you any discomfort, the old woman replied. But there was no stopping Quentin and Melanie. Now that the couple knew what Charlotte had been through, they understood why Mrs. Douglas kept coming back to look at their house. Just a couple of months ago, it was her home, and now her awful stepson had sold it. Having convinced the old woman to stay with them, Quentin easily determined which room she used to live in. You can take this room. The other three will be more than enough for us, the man said with a smile. Tears welled up in the old woman's eyes. Charlotte felt like she got into some kind of a fairy tale, in which good had finally defeated evil. Thank you, I'm so very grateful to you, the woman answered with a sob. Quentin smiled back and started getting ready for work. The man was feeling very good about himself and the decision their family had made. From that day on, Mrs. Douglas lived with the Dunahues. Charlotte and Melanie spent their days baking delicious pies and talking about everything in the world. The old woman shared stories of her youth and spoke about how much she missed her daughter, Linda. I don't know where she lives. Is she even alive? Maybe she settled down and had three beautiful children. Or maybe she travels around the country like she used to, the old woman said. Melanie couldn't confirm or refute the old woman's assumptions and therefore simply listened and sincerely admired Charlotte's endurance. A month passed, which was the best Mrs. Douglas had in a long time. Melanie often woke up at night feeling anxious over the upcoming birth. Don't worry, honey. You'll do great, Charlotte said, trying to calm the woman down. Since it was getting hard for Melanie to cook and clean, the old woman took on those chores. But then something happened that turned their lives upside down. At first, it didn't seem like anything special or like it could have a significant effect on their lives. That memorable morning, Quentin decided to change his shirt and took it off to throw it into the washing machine. Wearing only his t-shirt, the man headed to his room to get a clean shirt. At that point, Quentin bumped into Charlotte, who was on her way to the kitchen to get Melanie a glass of water. At first, the old woman didn't notice anything, but when something flashed on Quentin's chest, she couldn't believe her eyes. Squinting her eyes, the woman stepped closer and gently touched the cross that hung around Quentin's neck. The man involuntarily took a step back, after which he looked at the old woman in surprise. Where did you get that thing, dear? Mrs. Douglas asked softly. I don't know for sure, but according to the caretakers from the orphanage, this cross was in my baby carrier, along with some clean clothes and a bottle of milk, Quentin said with a sigh. Tears started streaming down Charlotte's cheeks. Still unsure about what was happening, Quentin took the old woman by the hand and led her into the living room. What's wrong? Are you feeling all right? The man asked cautiously. I'm fine. Everything's fine. The woman answered, but didn't stop crying. Quentin felt that something strange was happening with the old woman and that it had something to do with his cross. It took Charlotte about half an hour to pull herself together and calm down a bit. All this time, Quentin sat patiently by her side and didn't ask her any questions. He realized that the old woman was going through something very personal, which only she could understand. But as Charlotte began to speak, Quentin winced at the unexpected truth. This is my daughter's cross, Linda's. I had it custom made and gave it to Linda shortly before she left home, the old woman said with anguish in her voice. Quentin was beyond surprised.
After all, it looked like his mother could be Linda Douglas, Charlotte's daughter, who ran away from home with some biker a long time ago. Of course, Quentin realized that he could be wrong and might have rushed to conclusions. However, the man felt very sympathetic for the old woman and couldn't help but think that such coincidences rarely happened in life. In order to dispel all doubts, Quentin suggested that they should get a DNA test. They had to wait about a week for the test results, but when they did come in, they finally got their definitive answer. There was no doubt that Charlotte Douglas and Quentin Dunahue were related. Quentin couldn't help but tear up, thinking about the unexpected turns his life had been taking lately. It was truly amazing how they never even knew about each other's existence, but then life simply brought them together. At that point, Quentin decided to try to find his mother, so he turned to a private detective. For some reason, he thought that tracking down a woman named Linda Douglas in a relatively small town would be very simple. However, a month passed with no news from the detective. And only two more weeks later, the detective called Quentin and Charlotte to inform them that Linda Douglas was dead. She didn't die some tragic death in an accident or of an incurable disease. Linda's life was ruined by alcohol. Having broken up with her boyfriend, she started drinking heavily and never managed to stop. It was for this very reason that the woman decided to take her son to the orphanage and thereby relieve herself of parental obligations. Feeling shame over her decisions, Linda decided to leave her son her cross, which she then kept for his entire life. Apparently, the woman did have some motherly feelings after all. Having come to visit her daughter's grave, Charlotte knelt and asked for the woman's forgiveness for failing to find her sooner. At the end of this amazing story, I'd like to say that a couple of days later, Melanie gave birth to two beautiful babies and Charlotte Douglas became a great grandmother. It just so happened that it was at her advanced age her life had changed so drastically. Having reunited with her family, Mrs. Douglas finally found the very happiness she'd been dreaming of for so long. Meanwhile, Melanie and Quentin were happy that their children had a great-grandmother to look out for them and give them her love and affection.